We've been talking a lot about aftershocks from Tuesday night's earthquake. We showed you this Google Earth map with some of the 40 or more aftershocks that geologists recorded. Now notice that all of these are actually south of the main earthquake. That's because historically, geologists tell us that the Calaveras Fault breaks or rips from north to south. There was only one exception so far, and that is actually this aftershock right here, the biggest one from Wednesday afternoon. That actually happened slightly north of the main earthquake, and scientists say they're not sure yet exactly what that means. Now, I want to show you a little bit about what an aftershock actually is, so come over to my desk for a minute. This is a piece of cellophane wrapping paper, and I want you to suspend your disbelief for a minute and pretend that this is the Earth. Well, this is what happens in an earthquake. Now, watch the cellophane paper as it slowly uncrumples and loosens up from all the stress I just put on it. It goes quickly at first, but if we speed up the video, you can see it keeps expanding for the next few minutes, even though it goes more and more slowly. So that's what an aftershock really is. It's the Earth uncrumpling after an earthquake. But we've also thrown around another term, and that's foreshock. If I take this piece of paper and pull on it, a foreshock is the wrinkles that occur before it finally rips in half. In California, foreshocks tend to come within about three days before a bigger earthquake. And there's a 1 to 2% chance that this earthquake we've just experienced could actually be a foreshock for a bigger quake still to come. But experts say they won't know until it actually happens. So their best advice is to be prepared. Jonathan Bloom, Cron4 News.